Today, I'm going to show you how to extract measurable amounts of polonium-210 from uranium ore. This experiment was originally just a proof of concept, but it works so well that I decided to make a video about it. But before we start working with uranium ore, some safety precautions need to be taken. As always, you should measure yourself for radioactive contamination beforehand and then put on the green lab coat from the nuclear chemistry and also wear your decimeter. So what I'm doing here is I'm going into our storage room for radioactive materials and what I'm pulling out is our so-called blue barrel because it's a blue barrel and there are about 20 kilograms of low-grade uranium ore in it. So it's quite radioactive and we can even measure it and it reads about 130,000 CPM. Now I need to get some uranium minerals out of it, so I have to open it and when I open this barrel there will be a quite significant amount of radon released into the laboratory. Yeah, there's no other way to get the uranium out of it other than just opening it up. It's okay. By grabbing into this barrel I probably have contaminated myself, so I need to test for that. And if we measure for radioactivity we can actually see that there is uranium dust on my gloves. So I need to get these off my hands with the right technique without contaminating my actual skin. It's done like that. And then we have to measure the ball that I made from these gloves for radioactivity to make sure that the radioactivity is actually just on the gloves. It is so they can be thrown out as radioactive waste. And of course we can check my hands that there is actually no radioactivity. And as we can see there is no radioactivity on it. That's good. Some uranium minerals have an interesting property of fluorescence, but these are not the prettiest ones, so I don't mind dissolving them. What do we use for that? Concentrated hydrochloric acid. You can immediately see the solution turning yellow. This is due to uranium in the oxidation state plus 6 as dissolved uranyl ions. The goal of this experiment is to extract the polonium from the mineral as simple as possible. Therefore we don't even grind it, just let it sit for two days in the hydrochloric acid. Once that's done, you cut a small piece of silver sheet and place it into the preheated hydrochloric acid uranium polonium solution at 80 degrees C. The silver sheet does not even have to get cleaned before that, just throw it in there and wait for two hours. After two hours you can take out the silver sheet, rinse it with distilled water and there you have it. A brown tarnished sheet. Why is it brown? Not because of polonium. There are indeed larger quantities of polonium on the sheet but it's not visible to the naked eye and it's not highly radioactive. But I will come back to that later. Of course when you have a uranium solution you should take the opportunity to do something with it. To a dilute sample we add some concentrated ammonia solution and in the alkaline ammonia environment, a yellow solid called ammonium diurinate forms. Back to the polonium. To prove that we actually do have polonium on it, we have to record an alpha spectrum in the vacuum for just 20 minutes. And this is our finished spectrum and it's beautiful. Why? Let's look at the nuclear data chart. There you can not only see the name of the element, but also its half-life of approximately 138 days. But most importantly, the alpha energy of 5.3 mega electron volts. As you can see on the x-axis, that's exactly where we have the peak. Well, not exactly. It's the right turning point, but that's because the alpha calibration with alpha spectra is always done using the right turning points. And as usual for every alpha spectrum, you can see the tailing in the lower energy range. So now that we have demonstrated how to extract the polonium 210 on the silver sheet, we now have to answer the question, why is it possible? That's actually a quite interesting question and I can only answer it partially because we are not exactly sure. But that's our best guess. So hear me out. It's all about the standard potentials. Something we learned about it in school. The noble ion can oxidize the less noble metal to deposit itself as a metal on the surface. Now the standard potential for silver is known to be 0.79 volts and polonium would accordingly need to be above 0.79 volts. But that's not true because we are working not in water but in hydrochloric acid and there you have a new redox pair for the silver with a standard potential of just 0.22 volts. If you look in the literature you will find these following standards for polonium in hydrochloric acid. Then everything should fit, right? The hydrochloric acid, polonium is the noble element and you have a redox reaction looking like this. Under these specific conditions I would quite confidently say that the polonium here is in the oxidation state plus 4. 
I don't have definite proof for that, except it's just the most stable oxidation state for polonium. All these statements about the standard potentials of polonium should be taken with caution and a grain of salt because honestly, try working with such small amounts that are even highly radioactive and then measure a pure standard potential. Good luck. That's not gonna happen. A standard potential also assumes that you have an electrochemical double layer that can form where the surface is completely covered in polonium ions. But the concentration of the polonium ions in our example is way too low for any standard potential to really apply here. All right, let's go on to the next question. How much polonium do we actually have? Based on the region of interest and the detector efficiency, it can be calculated that there were actually 18 becquerels of polonium. This result, alongside the specific activity of one 166 terabecquerels per gram for polonium 210 results in a deposited mass of 100 femtograms of polonium 210. For comparison, a normal bacteria weighs about 10 times more. So now you can't really see the polonium, but you can actually measure it if you have the right equipment. And you don't need a alpha spectrum like we have. You can also take the SEA COMO170 for that. I measured it with this detector. So to summarize, with some hydrochloric acid and some uranium ore, you can extract measurable amounts of polonium from it onto a silver sheet. I would still not suggest you try it because you have a bunch of radioactive contaminated hydrochloric acid left after this experiment. I wanted to get that out. With that being said, goodbye.